Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a New England IPA from a brewer I haven't tried anything from prior. This specific beer is brewed by Humble Forager Brewing Company. They are based in Wanaki, Wisconsin. This is a New England IPA called Cloud Hopping. Clocks in at 6% ABV, and they were kind enough to give us their hop bill right on the can. So this one's Citra Galaxy and Nelson Savin. So we've got a nice mix of hops, all of which are pretty high, medium to pretty high, alpha acid content extraction uh, potential. And um, it's always interesting to see how everybody does their New England styles because they're kind of all over the board, though as a rule, they are dialed back on bitters. So label art on this one. Uh, very cool, very nice, has kind of like a sunset looking vibe. Uh, very colorful can, very appealing artwork. So let's get cloud hopping cracked gently here. All right, we're gonna pour this right in our nice tall all-purpose glass. Oh yeah, this one is not really having a problem forming a head. I'm gonna give it a little bit more aggressive of pour there to let it try to come together a bit. I'm gonna back off. I'm not gonna quite pour the whole can in there. I just wanna give it a chance to settle. So, big aromas coming off of this one, I can tell you visually. As expected, it's a New England style. It is quite hazy, very occluded. Nice, bright, true uh, golden yellow color. Looks absolutely lovely. Did form a nice head. Let's get right up for a proper sniff. Yeah, there's a lot of fruit notes coming off of this one. So we've got orange, we've got lemon, we've got grapefruit. We've got a bunch of different melons. It smells like a mix of uh, honeydew and cantaloupe and a mm, little bit of pineapple. That's the closest to tropical fruit I'm getting on the nose here. Um, but overall, it smells very fruity. I'm expecting this is gonna be one of those that's very uh, fruity in the flavor profile as well. Rather juicy, but we're gonna jump right in and see exactly how this tastes. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so this is one of those New England style IPAs that while they are very big on uh, presumably dry hopping to bring out all of these layers of aromas, this is one of the more hoppy New Englands I've had to date to be certain. It's got a really nice bitter bite to it. In terms of the flavor profile, um, the Dominant kind of flavor that's coming through here is very much earthy and a little bit of pine and resin. It really is taking its dominant flavor profiles from the uh, alpha extraction into the base beer. So with this hop bill, I'm not surprised. There is a little bit of underlying fruitiness and juiciness that you get up front and that uh, really in terms of flavor, it's uh, kind of a mix of uh, grapefruit and a little bit of melon, um, notably cantaloupe is kind of the flavor I'm getting here. So a mix of grapefruit and cantaloupe, that's where you do get this kind of fruit sensation and then that uh, kind of dials back and this earthiness continues to expand and then this pine and resinous quality uh, begins to expand and it kind of opens up and it doesn't kind of ramp up all crazy like a peak. It's a very gentle curve on the intensification of the flavor profile here and it kind of holds and it's got just as equally as slow as the decay on it. In terms of the length of the finish on this one, um, I will get even greater an idea on the second sip, but I can already tell you, it's been nearly a minute, I would guess, since that first sip. Uh, it's quite long. This is far, far, far longer than your average uh, finish on the end of a standard New England, just because they did extract quite a lot of bitters into this beer and that bittering effect really pushes out the end of this finish. As you would expect, it's not dry at all at the end. It still feels nice and wet. In terms of the mouthfeel, um, agitation on the palate, this one did get pretty creamy. You could feel very much a classic resistance to it. Though actually for just 6% on an IPA, 
The mouthfeel was even more impressive. It felt uh, quite a bit more viscous, quite a bit more resistant than your average. But again, this is a New England. They do tend to feel naturally just a little bit thicker. So overall, I'm very impressed on first sip. I'm gonna jump back in here. Uh, we're gonna think on the body, let these flavors re-intensify. I'll see if I pick out any other flavor elements and see how this finish uh, transpires on second sip. The body is medium, solid medium. Yeah, second sip, that kind of uh, cantaloupe and uh, grapefruit kind of hits me there right up front. It's really nice, got a burst of it, so it does taste very fruity, very juicy. And that holds pretty intensely there for about four or five seconds before that starts to dial back. As it's dialing back, the earthy side of the bittering effect starts to come through and it has this slow blossom about five seconds after that starts is where this kind of pine and resin it's a little bit slower to open up in terms of uh, how it intensifies its profile in the flavor but very very nice so we've got a nice mix of layering here we've got some melon we've got some citrus we've got earthy kind of hot bite and we've got pine and resinous hot bite and it's very very nice this is one of those um, more rare New England IPAs that I would suggest if you're not a big fan of really hoppy IPAs, very bitter forward IPAs, and that's why you tend to gravitate to New England style and hazy style, this may not be the one for you. But if you're a hop head, you love the bitters, and maybe you don't normally go for New England's, you prefer West Coast or standards that have a greater likelihood of having more forward bitters in it, this is one I would recommend to you because it's got a really nice pronounced bittering profile in it. Absolutely delicious. A lot of layers of flavor, absolutely incredible aroma. The body is exactly right. The mouthfeel is exactly right. The finish is ridiculously impressive. This is just a well done IPA. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores. When we come back, we'll get this beer ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. So this was Humble Forager Brewing Company's Cloud Hopping, a New England style IPA clocking in at 6% ABV. Humble Forager Brewing Company is based in Wanaki, Wisconsin. So uh, yet again, the string of amazing luck in 2021 in beers that I've tried brand new has continued again to this one. This is another of the tiny handful that I've reviewed over the last few years that did achieve a perfect 10 out of 10 in all categories for a total score, perfect 100 out of 100. This one is one, honestly, I was very, very surprised and pleasantly so. It had a ton of very interesting and classic New England style IPA elements, but then ones they don't normally have that really helped set it apart from the rest of the pack. So the aroma, clearly tons of dry hopping. They used a really nice blend of hops that are gonna draw out a ton of different fragrances. That was very clear. The taste, absolutely incredible. The New England side of it, the classic hazy New England side, just a big burst of ripe, fresh juice full of fruit. It was absolutely there. And then it had this multi-layer kind of phasing of a slow buildup and decay of these underlying bitters that opened up just the opposite side of the hop flavor spectrum that is normally missing in a New England IPA. It was present here. So it was still at its heart, clearly a hazy New England style. They just also extracted enough alphas, but layered it to where the New England standard side came first and then the bittering came second. So it kind of was a hybrid a little bit of almost a standard or West Coast style with the bittering intensity, but that hazy, very juicy, fruity focus side of the New England. This is one that I think bridges that gap and they absolutely nailed it. Categorically speaking, everything about this beer was exactly right. The color, the head, the retention, the length of the finish, the flavor profile, the aromas, the body, the mouthfeel, the whole kit and caboodle, they got it exactly right. 
Honestly, I am absolutely thrilled I got to try this beer. If this is what Humble Forager is about, I'm gonna be keeping my eyes out on Tavor for more of their beers to drop. This one was an absolute winner. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna stay in the loop when our videos drop on YouTube, just turn on your notifications, click that bell icon. It is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.